So let's get started. Thursday was what? Thursday was what? Did y'all? Ha <laughs> Keith's wedding. Yeah, Keith the Dow's wedding. But I was talking about Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was talking about Thanksgiving. And did everyone have a good time on Thanksgiving? Yeah. All right. Um, what is Thanksgiving about, though? Giving thanks. Now, you know, so often, I thought about uh, the uh, children of Israel when they were going through the wilderness. And they spent much longer in that wilderness experience than they should have. Why? Because they were spending time murmuring and complaining. You know, well, what we left behind and what are we going, where are we going? And they couldn't give thanks for getting out of bondage. They were so busy looking back and saying the bondage was better than this experience that we're going through. It made them delayed in that experience. And I want to say to you, a lot of us are going through stuff that we're going through that should not take as long for us to go through it. Come on now. The reason that we're delayed in that wilderness experience is because we're so busy looking at the wilderness experience and not seeing the promise that God has for us. We're so focused on where we're at and what we're in, we're not focusing in on the blessings and giving thanks for what God has already brought us through. See, when you learn to give thanks, I want you to hear me, when you learn to give thanks, you will get to move from the situation into what God has in store for you. I want to give you a few quotes. The first one is from Zig Ziglar. He created the uh, popular phrase, have an attitude of gratitude. Um, according to Zig, the more you recognize and express gratitude for the things you have, the more things you will have to express gratitude for. And I like what Tony Robbins said, when you are grateful, fear disappears and abundance appears. So we need to have an attitude, as uh, Zig Ziglar said, an attitude of gratitude. So what does that look like? Well, uh, according to the revealing word, what does it say about gratitude? Gratitude and thanksgiving are both necessary in demonstrating prosperity through divine law. Be grateful to God and thankful to the friends whom he uses to supply you. We have to have that attitude of gratitude. Now, everybody in here at one point or another has gone through something. Amen? Some are going through something right now. Amen? Some are in the midst of a whole bunch of somethings right now. But I want to tell you something. When you say thank you, just do it. Do it, do it, do it right now. Say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, Mother God. Thank you for my breath that I have right now. Just start saying thank you. I don't care what it is. What do you have to be thankful for? I'm thankful for my children. Give thanks. I'm thankful for my beautiful wife. Give thanks. What are you thankful for? Am I the only one thankful up in there? Let me hear you. I'm thankful for my granddaughter that's on her way. Give thanks. I'm thank Listen, I need help. Give thanks. And watch it multiply. So often we sit around so cool or so angry, so depressed, that we can wipe that depression out. Now, we, we say it all the time here. Uh, the physics, two things can't occupy same space at the same time. Huh? Do y'all know that? How many times have you heard it up here? You've heard it here. A bunch of times. Two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. So when you are depressed, why don't you remember that? When you are angry, why don't you worry that? Uh, uh, remember that. When you are worrying, why don't you remember that? Because if two things can occupy the same space at the same time, if you're sitting there worrying, replace it with gratitude. If you're sitting there depressed, replace it with thanksgiving. If you're sitting there mad at someone, replace it with giving thanks. I, I, you know, I said on the uh, prayer call a couple of weeks, uh, last week I think it was. It may have been two weeks ago. I, 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 
want y'all to understand Jesus taught us about giving thanks. I want you to think about some of the biggest miracles that Jesus did. One was feeding 5,000, right? <laughs> With seven loaves of bread and a couple of fish. All right? Another one was when he raised Lazarus from the dead, right? Okay? And another one where he gave thanks, he was about to be crucified at his last supper. And what did he do? He poured the wine, blessed it, and gave thanks. He took the bread, prayed over it, and gave thanks. And he passed it out. Jesus never let an opportunity to give thanks pass him by. And so you wonder why he was able to perform and do the things that he did. It wasn't that he was any more special than anyone else, but he understood the attitude of gratitude. He understood if he gives thanks, all that he gives thanks for will be multiplied. No matter what it is that he's going through, all he has to do is say, thank you, Father. When he raised Lazarus from the dead, he says, I know you hear me, but I'm doing this for the others so that they can understand. He was saying, I'm teaching them to give thanks. And no matter how dead your situation looks, no matter how bad your situation looks, if you start off by saying, thank you, Father, thank you in the midst of the pain, all things will work together for your good. Jesus taught us a very valuable thing but we forget about it. So I want you to start, I want to give you the spiritual action plan. A few things that you can do starting today. The first part of the spiritual action plan, <coughs> and I hear old people say this, these young kids today, they don't have any uh, uh, home training. They don't say thank you and please. I want you to start off no matter what it is that you're given, no matter where it is that you're, being, you're given something, I want you to remember, be mindful of saying, thank you. I, and, and when somebody gives you your food, they say, well, they, they, they're supposed to give me my food in a restaurant. No, you can still say thank you. It's so funny when I watch individuals that think they have made it and they think they're balling and how they treat the people that wait on them. Okay, you ever see that? They act like, you know, they're servants to them and they don't need to acknowledge them. Won't even look at them. I need some. And won't even acknowledge them. I want you to practice the Christ in you. I want you, no matter who it is, no matter where it is, to start and end with thank you. If someone says some kind word to you, and I, you know, she part of the family now. I, you know, she got to know I'm going to break on. I, I get on everybody. But one of the things that now says in English, and she's got down perfect to uh, perfection, thank you very much. <laughs> we need to practice thank you very much. <laughs> we need to practice that. So everybody, come on with me. Thank you very much. Come on again. Thank you very much. And one more time. Thank you very much. Now, thank you very much, all right? You didn't know you was going to be a part of my sermon, did you? Neither did I. <laughs> all right. Number two. This was something that was made big by Oprah Winfrey. Starting a gratitude journal. You're not doing it for me, okay? It's going to benefit you. You know, sometimes we can go through the day, and like I said, Two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. And we're focused on all the problems. I remember when, I think it was you, Deanna. It was one of my children. And they would uh, come and talk about the things that went wrong in the day. I said, no, I want you to focus on what went right in that day. Don't give me what went wrong. Now, let's start writing down and focusing on the things that we're thankful for. The things that we, and you know, don't just say, I'm thankful for my family. No, what about your family are you thankful for? I'm thankful that my son is a great young man and is having his own family and walking in responsibility, walking in his anointing. I do that with them all the time. I'll send them a message just because. 
I'm thankful for my daughter, her diligence in working with me and helping me in the ministry. Father, I'm thankful. I need you to be specific about the things that you're thankful for. Here's the thing. With that specificity, you're going to see abundance happening. If you write down every day at the end of the day, you know, Father, this was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful worship service. I had a wonderful meal. Oh, my God. Denise really threw down today and had a wonderful. Write it down. As opposed to sitting around focusing on what went wrong, I want you to focus on what you're giving thanks for. And in this, I want you to begin, the next thing is shifting your thinking. And it's the same thing. So the attitude, the, uh, um, the journal, the gratitude journal, and saying thank you very much. But I want you to shift in the midst. Don't wait until the end of the day. Somebody say shift. Yeah. Somebody say shift. Yeah. I want you to shift your thinking right in the middle of the challenge. Bobby, I don't need you going southwest and light on them. I need you to shift. I want to see Renee go Michigan on some folks. I know Renee. Renee can go Michigan. Renee is so sweet. But every so often, Renee can go Michigan on you now. But I want you to shift. And what does that mean? Right in the midst, think a new thought. As you're going through the challenge, shift. Move it from where it appears to be to where you know you desire it to be. And you can do it with a thought. Even in the midst, when someone's saying something to you, that man, I don't shift. Praise God, man. I love you, brother. And keep it moving. We've got to start shifting. We can't allow our emotions and everything else to guide us into situations that we desire not to be in. When we know this truth, what do we have to do? We have to practice this truth. So say shift, say shift with me again. Almost shift. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, shift. <laughs> Say shift. Say shift. We're going to shift some stuff around here, all right? The last thing that I want to do, you know, my baby girl, all of my children are just wonderful expressions of God. But on Thanksgiving Day, my daughter Deanna came downstairs, all bubbly. And she said, Daddy. I said, what, baby? She said, why do people take the giving out of Thanksgiving? People don't want to give. I want you to put the giving in Thanksgiving. I want you to be thankful in your giving. I want you to give to others. I want you to give in the midst of poverty. I, wanna, I asked him, could I share a story? And he said it was okay. We have someone right here, right now, that is going through a challenging situation. I mean, a very challenging situation. And for those of us that have been through similar situations, you can understand. I'm, I'll never forget when I started the ministry and I was going through a devastating time, Stan came to me and he says, you're going through this, Judy, but don't worry about it. It's just going to make you stronger and it's going to give you compassion when you see someone else going through the challenge. Well, right now, Minister Server and his family are going through a devastating challenge. A devastating challenge. Now, I, I want you to hear me. Every Thursday, this man gets on the prayer line and gives an anointing word to lift each and every individual on that phone. And no one knows what he's going through. No one knows the pain that my brother's going through. His wife ran for elections for the Board of Education for the city of Atlanta in the midst of the challenge 
He was thinking about giving. He and his wife weren't dealing with the challenges that they were dealing with, that they knew that the kids of Atlanta needed a good education. So even in the midst of the pain that they were going through, she was giving. Didn't win the election, but it didn't stop her from giving. She's still giving. They lost the home that they were living in and moved into a hotel as they were raising money. Servers had some challenges with employment this year. And as he got a job and was able to save up money so that he can move into a new place, someone broke into the hotel room and stole all the money that they had saved up to move into a house. But it didn't stop him. You wouldn't have known it when he was standing up here because he came to give. I always say that he's server, server. Why? Minister means to serve. And his name is Server. He's a serving man. He's always willing to give. If we reach in and give what we can, we know that God is always taking care of everything else. And he's walking in faith. I was going to end it a whole other way, but I'm going to end it right here. That's what in spirit is all about. It has always been about that. I can remember, as I said, when I started in spirit, I literally had less than nothing. Y'all remember that jalopy I was driving one time? <laughs> the few jalopies, but I mean, I had one. Even my kids was like, Daddy, I don't want to go to church in that. <laughs> God continued to bless. I don't care what you're going through. It didn't stop me from giving. It didn't stop me from serving. You want to be blessed and you want to prosper? Give even in the appearance of pain. Give even in the appearance of a challenge. Don't focus on what you're going through. Focus on what you're here to do. And if you focus on what you're here to do, and you focus on what God has in store for you, that pain that you're going through will die away. And your truth will be realized. I don't know what I would do as far as this ministry is concerned if it weren't for people like Sarah. Like Stan, like Stan, like Bobby and Ayinda. I don't know what I would do. So I give thanks to each and every one of you that have been on this this journey has been a learning experience, having it, Stan. And so often. I'm ready to just throw in the towel. One time I did throw in the towel for a little while, and them Jacksons <laughs> put together a petition. <laughs> you getting back in the pulpit. <laughs> I don't know what you think you're doing. I thank God for each and every one of you. It may not be big in numbers, but it is big in love and in spirit. I love each and every one of you, and I thank God for you. Peace and blessings.